So like I said earlier, the first 12 months, two years is a little bit testing, a little bit trying, but I sort of say to people do two summers is a really good gauge. Get through that second summer and you could be turning over anywhere between two and $400,000 a year potentially there. And that's as a sole individual. Yes, that's correct. Yep. So today joining me on the Gyms Group podcast is Chris Pepper, who's been with Gyms Pool Care for more than 10 years. And how many is it? 13 years, 14 years you've been with Gyms for now? Or? Yeah, 13 and a half years, Joel. 13 and a half years. Who's counting? Yeah. Who's counting? Exactly. <laughs> So what we thought we'd do today is just interview you know you about yourself. So how did you get involved with Jim's Pool Care? Maybe talk about the system itself and why should someone become an, a Jim's Pool Care franchisee? We are finding now that a lot of people are looking at Jim's Pool Care, obviously looking at other systems in the pool care industry, and they, they tell us that. And a lot of people choose us, which is fantastic. And so we want to talk about um, the ins and outs and things those who should know. So let's start, Chris, uh, with a first little bit about yourself. So how did you get involved with Jim's Group back 13 and a half years ago? Yeah, interestingly, I was uh, I come from a constructional background and, and corporate where I was um, I was involved in um, being a, a director on three or four different businesses for government. A lot of risk involved, and um, my wife and I have always wanted to have our own business. And we sort of said, "Well, look, we're taking a lot of risk to do some work for the government. Why don't we do it for ourselves?" And then after a little bit of research and whatever, we thought this should be a, a great industry. Back then, it was. You know, no formal qualifications and no real experience required due to our training regimes and things. So yeah, um, we relocated from Canberra to Brisbane and um, the rest, as they say, is history. So It's a pretty gutsy move to go from Canberra to a new to a new city and then all of a sudden you're doing a new business in a completely yeah. unrelated industry. So what was it about the pool care industry in particular? Like what were you looking at as well maybe at the time or how did you make the decision to go with the pool care industry in the first place? Yeah, well, interestingly enough, I'd, um, we had a pool in Canberra, which most people sort of raise their eyebrows to, But um, and I thought, well, you know, this seems pretty good. I can do this. You know, I'll look me after my own pool and the like. So I um, sort of talked to a couple of mates, and one of them actually knew Brett Blatt, who's our divisional. Yeah, so he got me in touch with Brett, and then after a few meetings with Brett, it was sort of sign on the dotted line, press hard, it's in triplicate, you know. So from that point forward, it was just, yeah, let's let's get into it. So yeah, a bit ballsy to um, move my wife and three kids, but she was extremely extremely supportive and the kids were probably at an age where they were sort of between primary school and high school and, and we just thought the time was right if we were ever going to do it now's the time and uh, I guess in hindsight I, I look back and think oh gee I wish I had done it 10 years earlier but you know you can't get those years back unfortunately. Now when you say statements like that because we hear it a lot what is it about then the business then makes you say that what, 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 what comes to the top of mind? Uh, the first thing that comes to my job is autonomy. You know, the first couple of years, I, I would, and I don't sugarcoat things for franchisees or prospects. I tell them the ideas. It's a tough journey in the first couple of years, especially if you're buying a Greenfield site. You know, you've got to establish yourself. You've got to establish customers. You've got to do everything yourself. I think the fact that I had young or children that were primary age children, I was able to go and pick them up from school and be home with them when I needed to be in that first few years, which was great. Then um, after that, I got heavily involved in Australian rules football up here with my son and you know, coached and all that. But it, again, it gave me that autonomy to be able to go, you know, I'm going to block that part of my day out to spend time with my kids and, and the family, etc. So yeah, I was, I was pretty lucky. New franchisees in the first couple of years, you've got to establish yourself. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Because I reckon it's great to talk yeah. about this transparently because a lot of people obviously they see the videos and stuff and they think, oh, it's going to be easy. I can't do training and all of a sudden I'm making all this money. But there is a lot of hard work behind it. So do you want to actually talk about the first couple of years and what you did and maybe just the reality of actually becoming a franchisee? Look, I, I was I was probably a little bit lucky, Joel, and you've got to have a little bit of luck, right? But um, I come up here, I knew nobody. Uh, uh, Brett was probably the only black I knew in Brisbane. So um, we were really starting on the back foot, but just sort of made contact with real estate agents and, and people that I thought were going to be helping me in business, being a good people person, having a good manner about you and knowing what's required and having an expectation, all those little things go a long way in the customer service game. So I think if you're reliable and, and you know, Jim talks about this and his generic training, you know, customer service is everything. So, and I think that's true. I've come from, again, from a customer service background, sales, all that sort of thing. And I just thought, you know what, well, I can have a crack at this, but the first two years is hard. You know, you think you're just going to fall in your, in your lap, but it does take a little bit of hard work. And we help from a regional franchisor and the system that we have in gyms, it's destined to succeed because there's none of my franchisees that have fallen over and failed if they're following the system and doing everything right. It, it, it will work. So 
hold the fight. And if someone's watching this, they're obviously hopefully interested in becoming a franchisee in your region or in the pool care division or in gyms in general. And maybe we're going to just explain for people real quickly because we obviously know what it is, but just tell them about what a franchisor is, so what your role is. So sure. maybe just talk about how do you guide them in, in the first six months, first year of becoming a franchisee. So the, my role as a franchisor is to, I'm, I'm predominantly there to try and support franchisees and mainly the new ones, some of the existing guys I've had for eight to 10 years and in fact, it's a pain in the backside for me to ring them now. They sort of go, oh, it's Chris is ringing again, you know. It's sort of a yeah, quick chat. And it's more social than anything. However, when you start business, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, daunting task ahead. You know, you've sort of been out, you've done your basic training, you, you think you've got it all right. But then when the phone rings and it's the customer saying, I need my chlorinator to fix or my filter or my pump or my pool sorted, you know, all of a sudden, you, you know, you get hot, fl- hot flushes, the anxiety comes and you think, gee, am I, um, am I built for this? So... I guess that's where I come in is to try to support people and, and walk them and talk them through that sort of stuff. Sometimes we head out and sign with them and, and help the newer guys. But it's definitely about consistent contact, making sure the phone's on, making sure that they're there and I can assist them. And it's not as bad as they seem once uh, they get out on site and we talk through a few things. So, yeah. Man. Let's talk about in the training. So, obviously, you mentioned three day generic training in Moorbike, which everyone does. But let's talk about the, the divisional specific yep. training that you guys do. So, maybe I'm just outline. How do you get someone from the corporate world or from some, something completely unrelated to being a, a pool care technician? Yeah, it's it's again, I'll, I'll probably come from that. Now, I think there's a lot of guys within our system that have tried other careers and, and just went, you know what, well, I just want to do something for myself or something completely unrelated to what I've been doing. The training with us is two weeks pretty intense on-site training. So we send you out with various technicians to go out on site and actually taste it, smell it, do what you've got to do on, in the day-to-day life of a a pool man, I guess, or a pool technician. So yeah, we get you out on site for that two weeks and then we do another two days in the office and going through everything we've gone through in that two weeks to try and make sure you're up to speed, you're confident and you can do that initial service when the phone rings. And do you want to talk about then maybe the ongoing support? So you did mention you're only in full away, but do you want to outline the other things that the Jim's Pool Care Division does? Uh, so yeah, we, we have a lot of trade. So we've got obviously got preferred suppliers and those preferred suppliers, we, we organize um, usually once or twice a year, we'll catch up with those guys as a group and we get on site with those guys. So it's usually their manufacturing facility or their, their, their warehouses and they'll hold a day's training where we go through all the new products, what might be happening, et cetera. So there'd be half a dozen of those days throughout the year. We have national conference, of course, which is annually. This year, we're, we're heading up to Darwin for a couple of days. And again, it's, it's a bit of a social, but it's also a lot of learning goes on. And it's a great networking opportunity, for, especially for the newer guys. Other than that, there's, that, that's about the extent of we have franchise meetings sort of once every four to six weeks locally. So that'll be our local crew, Jolly in North Brisbane for us. And we just sort of ca- catch up and talk about what's going on in the industry and you know, preferred suppliers and preferred items of choice, etc. You know, Paul Keener Division's got a really good culture. I know Brett's big on that and you do... You, you do have a lot of meetings. You do have a lot of social events and the Sparza Awards, which Jim's Pool Care guys are always winning awards and you have Rookie of the Year. You have a lot of things as well beyond what the standard gym's requirements are. I know the Pool Care Division goes above and beyond and as a culture, from an outside looking, I know pretty well most divisions. Jim's Pool Care's definitely got one of the um, the best or the strongest bonds that I see between regions in regards to the franchisees and the regional franchisor. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think as we get bigger, you, you know, it's it's harder to keep that group together. But you know, I've been like I say for a little while now, and, and uh, to watch it grow has been phenomenal, Joel. I yeah, I never thought. I'm pretty sure Brett will probably say the same thing. Never thought it'd be this big, but it's it's fantastic. We're getting a lot of traction, and like you say, there's a good bond, and we all look after each other. I think that's a, a really important thing. You know, it's not dog eat dog out there. We're actually there to help one another and and help each other out with jobs and things like that. So you know, it's it is a real network. Yeah. Now, let's talk about um, work. How does work come through? Um, a lot of people go, gyms is everywhere. Is there enough work for me? It's a question I see all the time. Do you want to just talk about the work in the region that's available? What type of things can they do? And how do you actually generate the work? Yeah, sure. So I, I think um, there's, there's probably a couple of avenues. We can um, we can sit there and sit on our hands and, and wait for the 131 number to ring and um, and get, get leads. And that's fantastic. I think people sort of say to me after 13 years, well, now, why don't you go out on your own? Why do you still do the franchising system? Well, even after 13 years, I've got three and a half employees. You know, I want to continue to grow this business. And the way I do that is there's a baseline that Jim's feeds leads into our system, into the into my my 
particular territory. So that's one, one avenue. But the other one is, you know, we do a lot of work on social media. We try to do podcasts like this. We try to do contact your real estate agents, all your local networks, businesses, even some of the suppliers will help us out at, at times. I mean, if they think we're specializing in something in particular and they can help us out with that. So yeah, yeah. so there's, there's a few avenues there. Pool builders, you know, real estate agents are always really, really big ones to try and get on board. Yeah, good so we do a lot of Google ads as well. I know Brett and Google ads and website SEO, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, and yeah. all that sort of thing. So there's a big machine that when franchisees come in, they don't have to worry about it per se, but um, just yeah. do the in-person stuff well and the online stuff gets taken care of by. It's really something I forgot about, Joel, to be honest with you. You know, when you, when you, when you mentioned Google, I went, oh, that was a bit silly of me, really, but um, it's probably one of the biggest things we put money into as yeah. far as advertising because, you know, if you're not ranking in that first three or four listings or the first page, you, you might as well not do it. So, uh, yeah, we do put a lot of effort into that. Sorry, absolutely. Remiss of me. Yeah, no, that's a good point you mentioned that about you know, why don't you go yourself and being around 13 years, you know, it's quite easy for someone to do that. But as you said, those points about the marketing and cost and the brand and these sorts of things as well. As a cost per month, if you look at the figures compared to if you had to do it as an independent and you had to set up your website, yeah. Google Ads, SEO, that sort of stuff, it'd be far, far more. So it's just far easier yeah. with Jim's in doing it. Plus you get all the extra things you mentioned before, better support and the training and Having franchisees who you can just bounce things off is invaluable. Um, yeah. You get that all in that one fee, which I think yeah. something. I mean, even I'm, I'm sure most guys these days have some sort of a, a Facebook chat group or a Messenger yeah. chat group or WhatsApp or something like that, and, and we all do that. And there's you know the, the phone bings around most days with people. You know, what do I do here? Who, who's had this experience before? And yeah, you know, all the boys and, and girls now because I've got a female just about the side right. eight in yeah. the next couple of weeks. So. Um, first female we've had in the group for a long old time so I'm really really buoyed about that and really enthusiastic she's um, real cut in stuff that's great to hear it actually hopefully we've been interviewed because it, um, yeah obviously yeah, been, there's a lot of divisions that's been, you know, a lot of divisions which would be suited like you know, mowing for example even though we're talking about pool care but like you know such suited to women but they just don't put off a little bit but pool care is a fantastic yeah. one as well it's a great it's a great business to do by yourself now, it's, it's a very male-dominated industry, which is a bit unfortunate because it is. It's, women are more than capable of taking their hand to this. It's not like you're doing extremely heavy lifting and things like that. It gets a bit grubby at times, but um, generally, it's it is a pretty pretty good industry for both sexes. I think I think customers would love it as well. You know, having yeah. having a woman franchise, a lot of our customers are predominantly more women than men, and then having yeah. a lady have a woman rock up to do it yeah. would be a really big advantage for for anyone. 100%, mate. I, and I said this to the young lady starting, you know, you know women are, are predominantly the decision makers in the house as much as we'd like to, you know, bang our chest and say it's us. You know, the girls get sick of us uh, procrastinating about getting somebody in or I can do it. I don't, what do I need somebody else? But um, a female on site is definitely a, a welcome addition. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think it's a massive advantage. So if there is a, someone wanted to change career, I think it's a great vehicle to do it. You'd have a massive advantage over everyone. Now let's talk about the um the pool shop side. So obviously you got yep. the mobile pool service, but there is a shop side to the business. So do you want to outline a bit about that and how that works? Yeah, well, so we 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 can do anything um, as far as filtration from filtration to pumps, chlorinators to solar heating to heat pumps, whatever. Once the pool's in the ground, a, a builder's you know washed his hands and said, "Thanks, Mrs. Jones, we're out." I think that's where we come in and, and we can offer services and products. So um, and we buy off all the main suppliers, so we've got a really good reputation. Mm. But and we're competitive, so a lot of the guys hold stock, so there's no waiting. It's not like you're waiting another week for for um, your pump or chlorinator or filter, etc. So we hold most of that sort of stuff in stock, and we can yeah within 24 hours generally have it back on site, get it up and done. That's an ask you, Chris. What type of person then suits Jim's pool care? What sort of questions should they ask themselves honestly uh, before making the decision to go ahead with you? What 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 have you noticed over the years from your experience? What who works well, who doesn't? Well, yeah, what? Do you I generally think the people that procrastinate, and this is going to sound a bit salesy, but the people that procrastinate are the ones that don't take the plunge and the ones that go, you know what, I'm going to have a crack and back themselves are the ones that generally are confident enough to do it and will do it. And I think once you've done that, there's probably the, the next hardest decision you'll ever make in business. So the first the first hardest decision will be actually pushing the button and signing a contract and say, you know, I'm going to do this. The second one's putting staff on. Would, would you believe? Because I think that's really, you're taking on somebody else out of responsibility for somewhere else. Well, it's just yourself. It's pretty easy. Um, getting back to the question a little bit, I digress. The sort of people who do it, I think, would just be fun, happy, bubbly sort of people that you don't have to be a salesperson. You don't have to be too technically minded. Most of the equipment and stuff we've got simplifies everything. So I think, um, yeah, it's just, just a great 
demeanor about you and a will to succeed and, and, and do well for your customers. I think if you have that, I sort of say to my guys, Jill, would you be happy walking away from the pool if it was left like that? You know what I mean? So make sure we, we meet the expectation that we would expect. And I'd expect that from my franchisees and, and anybody in business. So if you're looking to get into business, it would be, yeah, along those lines, make sure you're customer focused, make sure you're bubbly, happy, et cetera. And I think you'll be following. And there's one other question I presume you get a lot is about the pay for work guarantee or the income guarantee. So that's obviously something that helps people make that decision if they're still a bit unsure and they've got a mortgage and a family and stuff. That's something that can help people get across the line. So we're going to talk about the income guarantee or the pay for work guarantee, we call it, and how that yep. works and, and how that operates. Yeah, so the pay for work guarantee, I believe it or not, I'm 12 franchisees in now, Joel, I've never had to pay it. So I guess that's a good thing. And Jim talks about this at trading from memory is that, you know, if you're claiming the pay for work guarantee, there's something going wrong, you're doing something wrong, you're not following the system. So most people handle their heart. If they followed the system, this they wouldn't have to pay for the pay for work guarantee or the franchise or wouldn't have to pay for it. However, uh, it is there as a bit of security. Like you say, if there's a, there are bills mounting up and you're not reaching that fresh then I guess there's that little bit of a security net where we can assist you and, and bump up, make the difference up in your wages. So, yeah. That's great to hear you never paid it out because we do say that, you know, we promote it heavily, you know, pay for it, guarantee yeah. us and that all the time. People should know that, yeah, it's very rarely paid out um, by franchisors yeah. if they, as you said, if the franchisee follows the system. Now, I was going to ask you about the um, the income amount that someone can met, generate. You know, you don't have to say specific figures, but it's up to you. But, you know, what's the sort of earning potential that someone can do with Jim's Pool Care? Yeah, sure. So the first, like I said earlier, the first 12 months, two years is a little bit testing, a little bit trying, but from there on in, I mean, from 12 months, I sort of say people do two summers is a really good gauge. Get through that second summer and, and you could be turning over. I'm going to use turnover because I don't know what people are going to take out of the business or let's uh, cost Very of business, shall we say, Joel, cost of business, what they take out. But, you know, there's, there's turnover anywhere between two and $400,000 a year potentially there. So if you're good enough and you're working. And that's as a sole as a sole individual. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Well we, we I recommend going well, I, I can't say that. There's yeah, as a sole trader, yes. Yeah. And I was gonna say though, because I want to point this out, because obviously when people look at Jim's pool they're obviously looking at a few other systems. And our systems, from what I know from the other systems, are a little bit different. The thing with Jim's pool care, which I think is really good, is that you've got the option to scale but you're not forced to scale so if you want to be a sole trader and just do a sole trader and just be the one man operate for 10 20 years you can do that there's no one forcing you to get any bigger but if you do want to get big, bigger you're able to do that in your own time so maybe you want to talk about that opportunity with jim's pool care about actually how they can build a business beyond themselves as well if they would like to i think like i just said if you've got a, a focus on you're right we we have a pretty diverse group and there's some in it that are, are definitely a lifestyle type scenario where they'll have a fight off to go and spend time with their families or play golf or whatever their pursuits are. Um, there's others that will work six days a week and, and continue to grow and grow and grow and until they can split their business or put somebody on or things along those lines. So, yes, you can build it. Like I said, in 13 years, I've now got uh, there's 12 franchisees on the north side of Brisbane. I've got two guys that are full-time, one part-time and a, and a bookkeeper. We sort of turn over five to 600 invoices a month. So that's five or 600 pools we do per month, per four weekly cycle. So we're pretty busy and there's other people who look at you and go, are you completely nuts or what's going on here? You know, like you're mad. But, um, you know, everybody has their choice and, and what they want to do. And I just like to be successful and continue to grow. So that's just my theory. A great business, and um, you know, when you say sole person, you know, you know, will generate two hundred to four hundred grand revenue doing something that they can work flexibly around with their family, yeah. don't have to worry about corporate politics or the BS and stuff like that, and make good money. Like, yeah, it's it's a really good opportunity for people, and uh, especially if they're family focused, to make similar or exceed what their corporate income was, plus do something that's a bit more enjoyable and be outside. There's definitely opportunity there, Joel, to to earn a good wage out of it. No, no doubt about that. And I guess with the gym sing or in particular pool care, we're lucky enough to have the service side of it. And then there's also two or three avenues of income. And one of those is the service side. So we go out and service somebody's pool. That's fine. We've got the equipment sales, which is another avenue of income. So if Mrs. Jones' pump's broken or the chlorinated suit, there's another source of income while you're on site. And the third one is obviously the amount of chemicals we sell to make sure the pools are healthy and kept in, in pristine condition. So that's another thing as well, which I, I sort of punch home to a few others. You can, if you, I, I feel like if you're swapping time for money, you're probably not going to make a good income from it. But if there's upsell like chemicals and the, and the equipment, et cetera, then it's a pretty good alley, right? Yeah, I think it's a really 
I've spoken to a few franchisees who came from really tough professions, like the former police officers. I've spoken to a couple of really? them now, and um, just they they said the mental health, or well, the mental aspect of it as well, just being outside, not having to worry about that stuff, just by the pool. They enjoy just being by themselves and dealing with the customer. And just really, really enjoy um, the mental relief they've mm. had from the business, and it's quite amazing. I interviewed a guy called Daniel down in Victoria. He was a living year detective, and you can imagine. All the stuff that goes on with that, and just to see his face, he was smiling through the interview, and all his just the mental relief. Plus, he makes more money. Yeah. Plus, it's a positive thing that he's doing for customers. It's not the negative yeah. stuff. So, it's a really good. It's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? It is a no-brainer, and that's <laughs> the, like that's all we do. This just the yeah, yeah, no, right. a bit more, but a bit more of a push to try and take action. But like for you, you just said procrastination. You know, you should that ten years ago. So, what would you say to someone who's watching this sort of? Maybe a bit more risk adverse or something. Can they do an observation day? Can they? How do they test it out prior? What would you sort of say to them? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I'll probably get a, again. I'll probably get a digress here a little bit, but it is about knowing what you can and can't do. I mean, look, if you've got a family with kids, etc., that you might think, oh, I should I should not? You know, make a plan to get into business. I, I, for me, into pool care. I wish I had done it again. I said ten years earlier, I, I would have been a lot happier. But yeah, I, I just think um, push the button, and have a crack. You, you'll be surprised how quickly you'll, you'll build a business with the gym system. I really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the journey. I love everything about it. So, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm probably thinking about trying to get out and reach fire. So, uh, I'll, I'll let that point in my... You don't, you don't, you don't look gyms. that old, Chris. What are you, mid-40s? Hey? You don't look that old, Chris. Are you mid-40s or...? Uh, I've had a good life, mate, obviously. So, you care it does to you. <laughs> I was going to say as well then with, um, let's just talk real quickly before we finish up today about the inquiry process then. So someone watches this and goes, I like the sound of this whole thing. They inquire by the website or by the call center. Yep. Like, can you just walk them through what's the actual steps between that and then actually getting out into the van? So what's the process between? So in, in my experience, Joel, most people that inquire have, have narrowed it down already. So they've got a, a rough idea of what they want to do. And there might be, like you said, three or four businesses. So once they make an inquiry with us, the first thing we do is talk with them about their experience, what they want to do, what they want to get out of the business. If that still sounds positive from both parties, then we try and get them out on the road. I think that's really important. I, I, again, most people are sort of making up their mind by the time they've come out for a day on the road. They've, they've nearly made up their mind. They just need convincing it. Yeah. yeah, this is it. Yeah, I, I, this is exactly what I thought it would be. So we take them out for a day, maybe even two if they wanted to, show them what a day in the life looks like. And um, from there, then we, we get them to um, put down a deposit, secure a territory. And again, then we can start going through the generic training, the jingles on, um, on-site training, etc. And then um, next thing you know, they're running their own business. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds easy, doesn't it? It does, sound, it does sound easy, but the hardest thing for people, believe it or not, as, as you would know, is just making that decision to quit your job or just to actually get to training. That's the hardest thing. So if you can do that, you're generally halfway home, more than yeah. halfway home and doing it. So Chris, yeah. thank you very much for your time today, Chris. Um, if someone wants to inquire, they can just go to the Jim's Pool Care website or call one three one five four six. And if you're watching this in Chris's region, Chris will be the man you speak to. So he's been there for a long, long time and can, and can guide you and he's been through, if you're watching this, where you are. So young family, made a drastic sea change and, and a lot of changes and has come out a lot better for it. So hopefully you take action, people watching and listening and hopefully inquire with Chris. Definitely. Pick up the phone, push the button. All right. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Right. Cheers, mate. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.